The Great Debate Series. Best teams of the last 30 years. All right, college football, here we go. Number five on the list, the 2018 Clemson Tigers. Backpedaling, Lawrence flips it open, wide open. Justin Ross, off and running. The Alabama native wins the foot race. And Clemson strengthens its grip on this championship game. They won that championship over Alabama 44 to 16. They beat Notre Dame in the semifinal 30 to 3. Of course, they had an undefeated season at 15 and 0. They also beat Kenny Pickett's Pitt team in the ACC championship, if people don't remember that. <laughs> Strength of schedule that season, 19th out of 130 Division I teams. They were fourth in the nation in points per game offensively. They were first in holding opponents to only 13 points per game. Uh, this was a team that had five first-team All-Americans. Christian Wilkins was unanimous. Clellan Farrell, sorry, Stu, uh, hasn't had a great pro <laughs> career. Amazing in college. Uh, tackle Mitch Hyatt, Travis Etienne, of course, Dexter Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence as a true freshman. Also on this team, Amari Rogers, Hunter Renfro, T. Higgins, Justin Ross, you heard, Isaiah Simmons, Kendall Joseph, A.J. Terrell, just a few more. They beat 16-seeded NC State, 17-seeded Boston College with a very strong A.J. Oh Dillon. Oh, get out of here. All right, just telling you. Don't tell me they beat Boston College. That should be banned <laughs> from this list. They were Boston College was ranked at the time. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. That's 18. Uh, the 2018 Clemson Tigers, number five on the list. Let's go to number four, the 2019 LSU Tigers. Burrow, play action. Throws deep down the near side looking for Jamar Chase. Caught at the 15-yard line. He will waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. 52-yard touchdown strike. A.J. Terrell was on coverage but got beat by Jamar Chase, who hauls in his 19th touchdown of the year. Joe Burrow throws touchdown number 56. How about that? So, of course, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase still throwing and catching touchdowns now with the Cincinnati Bengals. So 15 and 0, they beat uh, Jalen Hurts' Oklahoma team in the college football semifinal 63 to 28. They beat Clemson 42 to 25 in the college football playoff final. They averaged 48 points per game. That was first. The defense allowed about 22 points per game. So that was 32nd of 130 uh, Division one teams. The strength of schedule that year, sixth hardest in the country. They beat number nine, Texas, number seven, Florida, number nine, Auburn, number two, Alabama, of course, with Tua, number four, Georgia, and the SEC championship game. Four All-Americans on this list. Joe Burrow, who also won the Heisman with the highest percentage of first place votes in history. Jamar Chase, who also won the Blitnikoff Award. Derek Stingley Jr., Grant Delpit. The O-line also won an award for the best offensive line in the country. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a bad little team right there. Uh, light up your cigars for Joe Burrow. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, too. Nobody thought anything about that team coming in. Which is wild. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Did I mention Justin Jefferson was on the I team? I don't think you did. How did I forget Justin Jefferson? I'm sorry. So Jamar Chase won the Bolitnikoff and was the All-American. Do you Can you name the other All-American that year at wide receiver? Uh, Jamar Chase. Oh, okay. So it was his 19? CD so. Lamb. Oh, really? Was the other one. I would have said one of the Alabama guys, but okay. Justin Jefferson incredible on that team okay let's move on number three top five greatest college football teams the last 30 years the 2004 usc trojans Leiter gives the ball to push he bounces in there for daylight and he's got a first down he breaks loose it's a foot race down the sidelines push is down to the five and scores as he somersaults into the end zone the trojans 13 and 0 under Pete carroll they averaged 38 points a game. That was sixth best in the country that year. 13 points allowed on defense. That was third best in the country. Their strength of schedule, fifth overall in Division I. They beat Oklahoma, Adrian Peterson's Oklahoma team, in the Orange Bowl, 55-19. to Matt Leinert, the Heisman, and an All-American. Reggie Bush, an All-American. Lendell White, Sean Cody. You had Matt Castle as a backup, which is always just kind of funny. Steve Smith, Dwayne Jarrett, Keith Rivers, Terrell Thomas. It went on and on and on. We put the 04 team over the 2005 team. Uh, yeah, it, almost like they feel like they should be on an NFL list because that was the pro team of yes. Los Angeles. At that time. It was basically, there was so much sizzle around that team. They were they were different than anyone on this list in the sense that they were so glamorous. It was like Will Ferrell on the sidelines oh, and it stuff. Was, it was a Hollywood team. Yep, absolutely. So that is number three on the list. Now, again, 
I'll let you know. Number one is under protest by me. So here's number two on the list. Number two on the greatest college football teams of the last 30 years. The 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Give it to Portis. Lost his balance. But keeps on going, and he might tear it open. Touchdown. They thought they had him. They didn't wrap him, and suddenly he was gone. Unbelievable. I think this should be number one on the list. This is Larry Coker's Hurricanes. Points per game, 43. That was 43, averaging uh, 43 points a game, third best in the country. They only allowed 10 points per game as a defense. (laughs) This is insane. Not too bad. Of course, this lat led the nation. Their strength of schedule overall was 22nd. Uh, Should I read just the players on this team? Sure. That you obviously are going to know. We can start with Ken Dorsey, but he's not even the most famous guy here. Willis McGahee, Frank Gore, Najee Davenport, Jared Payton, our friend, Andre Johnson, Jeremy Shockey was an All-American, Kellen Winslow, Philip Buchanan was an All-American, Ed Reed had nine interceptions, he was an All-American, Antrell Roll, an All-American, Brian McKinney, an All-American, William Joseph, Jerome McDougal, Matt Walters, uh, Andrew Williams, Vince Wilfork, ever heard of him? Jonathan Vilma, DJ Williams. Joaquin Gonzalez was an All-American. Todd Severs was an All-American. This Severs. was a stacked team. To me, this should be number one. But Perloff insisted, and I finally relented, the number one team on the top five college, greatest college football teams of the last 30 years, the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yes. Frazier heading more numbers, more yards to those. Oh, they don't have them yet? Look at Tommy Frazier. How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown. His second touchdown run of the night. 14 carries make it 195, a career high. Okay, so I don't need to defend the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers. They top every list. Some stats on this team. Okay, go ahead. Okay. They uh, average 53.2 points per game while allowing 14.5 points per game. Yeah. That's a 38-point differential. Yes. They were first in the country in offense and fourth in the country in defense that year. They uh, out... This is one of my favorite ones. They outran their opponents by over 400 yards per game rushing to 78 yards for the other team. Uh, They uh, had one of the top five coaches of all time, inarguably, Tom Osborne. Yep. Uh, and they had, I would say, without question, one of the top 10 college quarterbacks of all time in Tommy Frazier. Yep. Now, he got robbed of the Heisman, but I think later history looked back and said, wow, this was a really special quarterback. I also think two things happened. He didn't make the NFL because he had a blood clot in his left leg yep. and could not continue. And also, two, it was the Charlie Ward, Tommy Frazier. Like, black quarterbacks were not viewed the same way back then. So he was not given a chance. They had Lawrence Phillips, who was as good as anybody on that Miami team at running back. And a freshman, I can't remember his name. Oh, yeah, Amon Green, (laughs) who jumped in there. So they were trailing in one game all season. This was their closest game of the year. They were trailing to Washington State. Uh, I think they were trailing 7-0. They were up 28-7 by halftime and then put in the subs to win 35-21. That was their closest game by far. Nobody could touch him. And here's here's my real reasoning. I'm going to just let, lay it out there. Yeah, go ahead. Miami, if you put these two teams on a field together, Miami had all the future NFL stars. It's yeah. the greatest future NFL team. But Nebraska was so tough, I feel like they would maul them. It's a bit of a style versus uh, skill argument. But my, Nebraska was so tough and so confident and so mean that they just completely intimidated their opponents, just like Miami did. I was going to say, about. you want to have a toughness competition. Can I offer you Ed Reed and Bryant McKinney? Ed Reed? Ed Reed is like one of the best safeties of all time. Yeah, but he's not Mr. Tough Guy. He's actually, On the field he was. Ed Reed? No, no one's scared of Ed Reed. There's about 50 other guys that you'd be scared of, like those linebackers on that team. But here's the other thing. Miami was so, so good, had this huge margin of victory. Look at them on the road. When you bring people in the Orange Bowl, first of all, it it's, feels like the whole thing is about to follow over at any second it's (laughs) incredibly intimidating but that team i looked at their record they went out on the road and could barely beat the acc or big east teams or whatever they were in at the time they were dominant at home average on the road But their average margin of victory in games was 33 points right but look at a couple of their games were super close uh virginia tech they only beat by a couple points in blacksburg they actually let bc who is nothing back then stay in the game in boston 
They they were just one of those teams where yeah, there's I have no problem with number two, but ninety five Nebraska to me was just more dominant. So and we're just, we're arguing about degrees of dominance, but I think you have the NFL in your head with these teams. Maybe I have the NFL a little bit, but because well, let me ask you one thing: yeah. if if you have your fifth string running back as an NFL player. Does that make you a greater team? He's not on the field. Frank Gore's not on the field for that team. I understand, but I'm just talking about if you put the 2001 Hurricanes up against the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers, Huskers, I actually think that Miami wins. No way. I, I do. First of all, you have such a coaching advantage and you have such a quarterback advantage. I just think, I mean, the, Nebraska averaged 400 yards of rushing a game. They would rush them to death. I know, but this is the best defense of the year. They were holding opponents to 10 points. Nobody was going to hold that Nebraska team. Nebraska's offensive line just mowed people over. I, I, okay, I mean, but here's was, the thing. You're talking about how Miami didn't have a great set strength of schedule, 22nd in the country, yeah. right? Nebraska's was 24th. Nebraska beat four top ten teams that ended up in the top 10. Four, and they killed them. They beat them all by 40 points, uh, including they beat a really, really good Florida team. Uh, in the final game, 62 to 24. They're both incredibly. Yeah. First of all, I think we're uh, we're arguing no, apples been, and oranges. So we've been debating this so much over the last couple days that it's like you're talk again. Yeah, you're talking about degrees of of greatness, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I think I was like, I'm I'm just this is under protest because yeah. I'm not going to convince you, and you're not going to convince me. But it's college football. It's not out of this is the best college football team. So, yes, that Miami team was the best NFL team that happened to be playing college football. <laughs> but I, I still think Nebraska, uh, yeah, and I stick by this one. And also quarterback and coach. I mean, 